Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In today's video for WordPress, we're going to be checking out a new plugin from CodeLights. And this is a free plugin that allows us to expand the functionality of not only WordPress, but it'll also integrate into various other development tools such as Visual Composer. So in this video, I'm going to take you through how this works, how it interacts with the website, how it builds itself into Visual Composer and some of the tools that this particular plugin gives us. So let's check that all out right now. So as web designers, we can never have enough cool ways of presenting our information. Visual Composer is a great way of showing off exactly what your website can do. It's a great drag and drop environment, but anything that expands that functionality and gives us even more tools and widgets is a good thing, especially when it's free. So let's check out the App Solutions new plugin and let's see what it offers us. So as you can see, I'm currently on a page on my WordPress website. And you can see I've got a normal layout. We've got a slider, we've got a couple of columns, some images and things, very typical kind of layout. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up Visual Composer and we're gonna take a look at those new elements that have been added into the interface. And then we're gonna take a look at what they offer us and what they look like on the site itself. So in this demonstration, I'm gonna be using the Absolutions Impreza theme. So you're gonna see a lot more tools and functions in my installation of Visual Composer because there's some other add-ons plugged into it. But I'm gonna minimize that by just showing you the tools that we're looking at today so all I'm going to do is come down and click to add a new element and you can see we have all the options to separate things out at the top so I'm going to click on code lights which is the six new tools that we have available to us you can see we have stats counter flip box interactive banner interactive text modal pop-up and testimonial so let's go through these one by one let's take a look at what they offer us so the stats counter as you would expect is an animated way of displaying statistics on your website so let's give them a click open it up you can see we've got a very simple interface and like I said, it integrates itself into Visual Composer nicely so everything looks like it's a native function. You can see we've got the initial counter value and the final counter value. So let's just set this to some different figures. We say 50 and we'll say 200. Do we want to give the counter a title? Let's give it a countdown title. If we go to custom, you can see we've got some options to fine tune how this is animated so we can control the duration, the font size, the title font size, and the colors that are associated with the value and the title itself. So let's just set those and we'll just set some colors in there. I'm not gonna worry too much about what they are. So we'll just set those to red and dark gray and we'll hit save changes and we'll update the page. And then we'll jump over to our page and take a look at what that looks like on the screen itself. So let's just press F5 to refresh the screen and scroll down to where the counter is. And there you can see our counter now counts up from 50 to 200 and the color and the style that we set on it. So pretty straightforward, pretty easy. And if we go back into the admin, if we wanted to, because we can set this up to interact with Visual Composer, we could go in and we could style that element if we wanted to. So we could come in and we say, let's set a background color or background image on there. Let's set that. We'll set an overlay on there. Um, we'll set, yeah, black's fine. We'll set an opacity of around about 80. That's 85 will do. So we hit save changes on that and update it. So we can set this up now to work in the same way as we can any other element in Visual Composer. So you can see we've now got that set up with the background image and the countdown timer working. So pretty cool. So what's the next one? Let's just get rid of that. And let's put the next element in there. So let's click and we'll just filter it down to code lights. And this time we have Flipbox. Now the Flipbox is going to give us a lot more control. And as its name suggests, it gives us the ability to have a two-sided animated box where we can have information on both sides and we can control the animation of both the flip and some other aspects of it. So as you can see, we can set up links on there. So we can specify, do we want no link, add a link to the whole of the Flipbox or add a separate button as the link. What animation type do you want? We've got flip, tilt, cube flip, and cover open. The direction of the animation, the duration of the animation, and whether we want any easing to smooth out the start and the stop of that animation. So you can see we can get quite creative by using just the preset options in there. If we jump over then to the front side, you can see we can now control all the aspects of the front of the flip box and the same on the back. And we can also come into custom and we can fine tune various different elements. So let's just put a very, very simple flip box together. 
So we say we'll have an icon and we'll say for this example, we just use a calendar icon size. You can see we can have a simple icon. We can put a circle or square behind it. We can set the color for the icon. So let's go for something like white. We'll have a circle background and we'll set the background to be green. Flipbox title. My flipbox. And we just pop some description text in there. So we just paste that in. Element order, do we want icon, title, their description? So we can adjust the way this is displayed and we'll come back and tweak some of those later. Background color, what we'll do is we'll set that to be green, but we'll change the alpha on that. So we'll set it to be semi-transparent. And the text color will set to be a dark gray, so it stands off that. We can specify a background image if we wanted to, how we want the image to be cropped, whether we want it to be full size and so on. And now we can just jump over to the back. And we'll specify that the title font is going to be 24 pixels. Again, we use the same description. I'm not too bothered about that. Background color, we'll set this to be a different color this time. And the text color will set to be white. And that'll do. We'll, we'll leave it at that for now. We can always come back in and change any of this later on. So let's just hit the save the changes on there. And let's update that and go and take a look at what it looks like on the site itself. So let's just refresh the page and then scroll down and take a look. So there's our flip box. If we take our mouse over it, it now flips with the style that we set up. And you can see a change of the color as we expect it to. So we just jump back in there. Now let's go back in and make some changes. So let's edit this. And let's just say we want to have, let's go for an image this time instead of being just a color on there. So we'll come down, we'll set a background image and we'll choose this one. That's fine. Let's just change the animation. Let's just say we want to have a cube flip and we'll have this upright and we'll say, let's choose a couple of different easing options and say save changes. Update that. And I'll just take a look. Come back in and refresh this. So we now have a completely different design. So you can see you've got the image and the animation. So there we go. Pretty cool. So you can really get quite creative with that. So check that out so let's take a look now at the third option so next up we have the interactive banner so this allows us to have an, a hoverable image with additional information that displays when you hover over so let's take a look at how that works so let's add the interactive banner as you can see we've got three tabs we can specify an image so we'll do that to start off with we'll set an image on there we can then specify the image size that's going to be used. So I'm going to say 600 by 600 cropped. Banner title is my banner. And we'll pop a description in there. We can set a link on this if we want to. Again, we can specify a range of different animation types. So let's just choose Nike. And we've got some easing options. So let's just choose that. Style, we can come in and we can say what background color we want. So once we roll over it, what kind of background color do we want on there? So let's just say we're going to have a nice green color, text of white, aspect ratio. Let's go for two to one landscape. And yeah, that's fine. That's all looks good to me. We'll just keep it simple like that. We can come in, we can change the typography if we want to. But for now, we'll just leave that as it is. It's just a demonstration of what this does. So we'll save the changes and update. Then we'll jump over to the test site and refresh the page. As you can see, this is the effect that we get. Kind of weird. So let's go back in. Let's just choose a different animation effect and see how that influences the way that everything is shown. So let's go for this one and save that and update the page. Come back in and refresh. And as you can see, we now get the background image. And as we roll over, we get our animated effect with a different animation with the easing effect that bounces it back so quite cool so next we have the interactive text option so let's check that out so you can see we've got a very simple interface on this we've got three different text states now you're not limited to this you can have as many as you want you just need to put each one on its own individual line and what's going to happen is it'll animate between those different states so you can see that with this example we've just got three different states with one word at the end changed. 
you can see we've got each state has to be on a new line so it tells us what to do bold and dynamic text the animation type so you can see we've got fade in the whole part and so on so let's choose let's choose a different one on there go to custom you can see we can choose the font size the color dynamic text color whole range of different things on there but let's keep it simple let's just save the changes on there let's update this and then we'll jump back in and take a look at what this looks like on the site itself so let's just jump over and refresh the page and as you can see if we leave that now it'll animate through the various different text that we had on this you can see that it notices which is the different piece of information it makes that bold and you can see it animates it based upon the type of animation that we chose very very simple but could be quite effective if you want to draw attention to a specific part of your website or a sign up form or something like that so that's all there is to the interactive text option still pretty cool so let's just jump back over let's get rid of that and move on to the next one so next on our list we have the modal pop-up option now as his name suggests it's a fairly standard fit we've got a modal pop-up we can specify some text to go in there a title and we can set triggers and so on but it's still quite useful if for example you wanted to put something like uh, a pop-up to do with your subscription such as a mailchimp sign up form or something you could do that from within here so let's just keep this simple and we'll just say sample pop-up and we'll pop some text in there obviously we can style that we can do anything we want add images and so on in there we can jump over and specify what the trigger is so you can see we can have a button click text click image click or on page load so if you had on page load for example that's quite useful if you want to do it for something like a sign up or you had an offer or something you want to inform people about and then you can specify how long it has to wait before that actually pops up when the page loads obviously this isn't necessarily the best way of doing that because this would happen every single time the page loads and you could end up annoying people so i would say use something like that very sparingly but let's just keep this simple and say we'll use it on a button click read more is fine button text color that's fine let's just set that to be red so we can see it button text color set that to white and about the alignment we set the center and then we can jump over to style and we can specify how we want this pop-up to look so you can see we've got options from small right through to full screen you can remove the white space around the pop of content. We can specify how we want this to appear, what animation we want to use. So let's just go for something a bit of fun, like a 3D flip, for example. We can choose a border, overlays, and so on. I'll leave all that as it is for now, just so we can try it out and see what it looks like. So let's just say save the changes. Let's update our page, and we'll jump over to our test page, refresh that, and take a look at what this looks like on the page now. So there's our button for our pop-up for a modal pop-up so let's click on that and there's our pop-up so you can see pops up animates in goes to the background out quite nice quite simple and useful could be again useful if you want to do something like you were asking someone to do something or you wanted some instruction this is quite useful you could click on that and it would show them how to use a particular function quite nice so let's just jump back in and change some of the settings on there let's try some different different animations uh, let's just say we're going to have a fade in for example uh, we'll go for large and save that out update it jump back over and we'll refresh the page to check that out now so let's click our read more button again and there you can see we now have a slightly different pop-up larger and so on and on a final one let's just come back in one more time and we'll just choose a different style again so let's just say we're going to go for uh, let's go for slide from top and we'll just change this to be of a huge and update that refresh and test it out and there we go pretty cool so our sixth and final widget is the testimonial option so let's click on that and take a look at what that offers us so you can see we've got again a very simple interface we've got the general where we can put our quote so let's just pop something in there we leave the name you can put the the author's name the description you can have this go through to a link if you want to link it back to the person or the company that wrote the testimonial you can put a photograph in there if you want to so let's just go for something simple it doesn't really matter what it is we'll set that in there and you can see we've got do we want quote text only with scan document or with video so you can see if we select any of those we can choose a video to embed in there as part of it or a scan document and we can upload that scan document we'll keep this simple with a quote text as it is and we'll just jump over to the style you can see we can drop this down we've got five different options available to us 
So let's just say for this example, let's go for speech balloon. And you can see when we do that, we can now specify the color. So let's just go for, let's go for a nice green. Let's just set that to be semi-transparent again. Text color, we'll have a medium gray. That's fine. And you can see we can change the style of the quote text, the author size. We can make the quote text italic or not. So we'll hit save changes on that, update that, and jump over to our test page and take a look at what that looks like on the page. So let's just refresh the page. And there we go. There's our quote. You can see we've got our picture, the information about the person that wrote it, the company they're working for, and our quote itself. If we come back in, and let's just go and choose a different style and see what that looks like. So we'll jump to our style, and we'll choose this time. We'll go for modern. And we'll leave all the colors and everything the same. So we'll just say save changes, update that, jump over to our test page, and refresh. And there we go. There's a different style again. So you can see, very quick, very easy, a nice range of styles. The fact that it's free and expands upon the things you can do inside Visual Composer or in WordPress itself, if you don't use Visual Composer, is pretty admirable. Like I say, it's completely free. It comes from a good development team. I'd highly recommend checking it out. The link is in the description below. So download it, install it, try it, see what you think. Let me know how you get on with it. And if you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else we've covered on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. And until next time, take care.